Hey, and welcome to Trail Talks. I'm glad you guys have joined us. We wanted to tell you some stories today. Um, you've gotten some numbers. Yeah. Uh, a couple weeks ago, in the beginning of a message, I really gave you some numbers from 2020. And then I turned around, turned that into an email, and sent it out. So what we wanted to do today was give you the stories behind hmm. those numbers. Let's do it. Yeah, because numbers it. matter, right? They do. You know, actually, in my readings right now in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. I'm reading through the book of Numbers because <laughs> God cares about numbers. Yep. And numbers represent people. Numbers do. represent givers. Numbers yeah. also represent people whose lives are being changed. And so we want to celebrate that. And frankly, a lot of numbers represent the faithfulness of God, yeah. which is what we absolutely want to proclaim. Exactly. So let's start with a number that's really exciting to celebrate 1,569 people served in 2020. And wow. that, when we talk about 1,569 people served, that's not including Epic, Kid City, small groups, really anything on the church side. That's just the Mosaic Center. Wow. And that's unique individuals. Ask me, Chris, the difference between people served and contacts. Carolyn, I have an intelligent question to ask. <laughs> What is the difference between people served and contacts? And I'm glad you asked because 1,569 people is individuals. Hmm. The pantry goes down to Maxwell House every single month, but hmm. Maxwell House residents don't change. So yeah. those, that doesn't, we don't count those uh, every month contacts as a person. I mean, we don't count those people twice. That's what I'm yeah, going to say. We yeah, don't count yeah. those people twice, but we do count contacts. So yeah. you want to know how many contacts we made in 2020? How many? 5,263 oh. contacts. Wow. That's a lot of contacts. That's awesome. That's that awesome. represents women of worth, yep. uh, uh, GED. Yep. That's that's just, um, our, our kids in new beginnings with hmm. whom we have contact through the Mosaic Center. Sure. That represents Freedom's Path and Maxwell House. Hmm. When those pantry, that pantry team goes in and they love on those folks and oh, pray yeah. for them, yeah. that's a contact. Wow. Some of those contacts, those 5,263 contacts are just for a few minutes. Some of them are for hours. It's when wow. Sherry Fulmer sits down with a, uh, a resident at Maxwell House and really prays with them through something going on in their life or yeah. women of worth. Yeah. Every time, every contact at women of worth is a couple hours. Yeah. Every contact. Yeah. So maybe the same person, but that represents that. That's, that's basically... 5,263, let's just round it, um, kind of estimate hours of discipleship opportunities of prayer. Wow, wow, That's wow, a wow. Lot. No doubt, no doubt. And, I, and mm -hmm. I tell you what's interesting to me in that, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you read the Gospels, you see clearly that there are disciples, uh, or that Jesus ministers on at least two different levels. He mm -hmm. ministers to disciples mm -hmm. and he ministers to crowds. Mm -hmm. And the gospel writers are actually really meticulous about kind of parsing those things out because right. both matter. Mm -hmm. um, to me, Third Saturday was really, really good crowd ministry. Right. Yeah. Really good crowd ministry yep. and absolutely important. Yep. It looks to me like we're beginning to learn how to do discipleship level ministry, exactly. which is really exciting. Yeah, which is what which is what the Mosaic Center was formed to do to build lives and break cycles Amen. to actually take everything to the next level. So, thing, speaking of Third Saturday, um, this is the amazing thing to me that last year we made five thousand two hundred sixty three contacts, and that's without Third Saturday mm. happening every month. Um, we That's did our last third Saturday in January 2020, so more contacts in 2020 than in 2019, more contacts in 2020 than 2018. Both of those were high numbers for contacts in general for, wow. in our history. So this is the wow. highest number of contacts in our history, and it's in a pandemic year without third Saturday. I was about to say. So if you're thinking, if you're wondering to yourself, how are we ever going to make this work without Third Saturday? Actually, Third Saturday gave us such a gift because it taught us how to do ministry, and then it kind of birthed us into this level. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, again, kind of looking at the Gospels in so many ways, yeah. part, of, part of 
Jesus's ministry strategy was to move people from the crowds into discipleship. Right. Like, like in many ways, that's right. kind of what God has done here. Right. So another number, uh, speaking of Third Saturday, it, last year, all those contacts were made with 59 volunteers. That's less than half the year before. Wow. Because the year before, we had Third Saturday. And, yeah. You know, we were counting those volunteers wow. every month. But with less than half the number of, of unique volunteers, 59 of them, we were able to make that much uh contact with other people. And so if you remember um, about five or 10 years ago, which was January, 2020, um, we, we were BC, talking about, yes, before right, before, COVID. that's right. Before COVID. That's good. We were talking about, um, our one thing we were mm-hmm. asking everybody, where yep. does your deep passion intersect with the world's deep need? And that yep. intersection, we want you to focus on that. That's your one thing. And we had everybody identifying their one thing mm. and COVID hit. So as people come out of, uh, um, pandemic, uh, AP after pandemic, <laughs> um, there is my, life. Yeah, there is life. And on my prayers that people will pull them, you know, they will, they will pull back together their one thing, um, passion, mm. and they'll begin to serve. And then man, just imagine what can happen. Just imagine oh what God can do with all those, with all those passionate hearts and all these opportunities to make contact. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, because yeah. because in many ways, um, really, what these numbers are saying is, ask the Lord of the harvest for workers, because yeah. the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yeah, yeah. So here's another thing, Chris, um, and I'm starting to feel like one of those TV show things, but I really want you guys to stay with us because these are these are important for the life of our community, and we're really trying to remember what it means to be in community together mm-hmm. right now. Is it is it, you can feel the stirrings of it? Yeah. You know, coming back, like almost like coming out of hibernation. Mm -hmm. I I want you to remember what we as a community are about. Yeah. So let's talk about online worship. We made a decision somewhere along the way, a conscious decision. We are a missional community. We are not a rock star community. We're not. Our Sunday morning worship is extremely important to us, but making it, but but giving it all the bells and whistles so that it can compete with a larger uh, church that has that actually has all the bells and whistles. That's just not going to be our thing. Sure. Even if we had them, we wouldn't know how to use them. Sure. And we wouldn't be our most authentic self, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but given that, given that, knowing we are a missional community, we can still say um, that we had an average in 2020 of 194 people in worship online. That's wow. just our online. Wow worship number, which is more than our average worship in person in 2019. In fact, it's a really high number. It's maybe not our highest ever, but it's a really high number for us, average. Wow. And and that doesn't include the 50 to 70 people who are in-house every week. Wow. Which means that last year we had our highest worship attendance ever. That's and, crazy. Yeah, I know. And, and, and we get how you, we've tried to figure out how to uh, figure out those online numbers. Mm-hmm. So there's a formula that you yeah. use. You don't just take the raw number that Facebook gives you, which is like, Hey, 8 million people saw you today. And that's not actually the real number. Um, we, there's a formula that you use to actually get to a realistic estimation. Yeah. It's still an estimation, yeah. but it's a more realistic one. Who stuck with us for any amount of time? They didn't just scroll by and happen on it, yeah. but they stayed with it for a length of time. Mm-hmm. That's what we are counting. We're assuming we're using- if you stayed with us. For some amount of time, you were actually planning to click on and, and yeah. hang in. Yeah. So, um, highest worship attendance ever. And, you know, this is interesting. Counters, people who count the the, the offering for us on mm-hmm. Sunday mornings, mm-hmm. they they tell me lately that they're noticing more and more out of town givers, which wow. tells me that it really is an outreach for us. Yeah. Yeah. That's which was, cool thing. in many ways. The whole point of the One Thing campaign was right. to reach beyond these walls. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, I personally, I want to thank uh, Linda Cutcliffe and the Bags yeah. and Hugs team for making those contacts. All those you know. numbers, all those um, in-person numbers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Ted Herlow and his team for, yeah, all, media those, team. for all those online contacts. Sure, I mean, sure. between those two teams, a lot of work, a lot of good solid outreach happened last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I told Ted yeah. during during this whole thing, I said, uh-huh. you know, you, you never quite know when God's call is going to get amped up in your life. Yeah, 
Yeah. But he saw the opportunity and he and he walked it through faithfully and 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 so many people did. You yeah. know, my whole so worship team did. Uh, the, yeah. The yeah. GED folks, just so many people. Yeah. Um. So very grateful that by God's grace, in a completely unexpected way. Yeah. You know, when we were talking about those outreach numbers um, and the, those contacts, five thousand two hundred sixty-three contacts, you were like. I didn't see those people. Yep. And that's the sense that we have with you guys. Probably you didn't see a lot of this happening, but it happened. You mm-hmm. know, there mm-hmm. were still volunteers showing up with their masks on week after week after week. And there were still people going after it in lots of hidden ways week after week after week. So when yeah. you come, when you come in, just come in with a ton of gratitude because uh, everybody was doing what they could at the time. And we're just so grateful, really yeah. grateful. Very grateful. So, um, Let's talk numbers a little bit more. Um, we, we mentioned this uh, in the letter that we sent out, but we do want to just acknowledge that um, even though we had 30% fewer givers, and a lot of that was because we didn't have people walking in and dropping something in the in the mm-hmm. basket, you know. Mm-hmm. Even though we had 30% fewer givers, our, our income in 2020 was only 4% less than 2019. That's unbelievable. And because we had... You know, we weren't paying a power bill or we, our power bills were extremely low and nobody was in here for a couple mm-hmm, of months. Mm-hmm. And and because we just had fewer things going on, the overhead at Mosaic was lower. We actually ended the year better than any other. Financially, we ended 2020 better than any year prior. Wow. Which is just stunning. We Praise took on God. a permanent mortgage of the building. We um, we had fewer people giving. We It was also... I mean, we never knew what was happening week to week, and yet somehow God has sustained, and I'm really grateful Not only for that, that, between the Mosaic Church and Mosaic Center, our staff actually increased. I yeah, know, and, and, right. and somehow, right. I mean, God, we, how we, do you do that? He has right. just been so kind. Yeah, so, um, you know, just as a word of encouragement, um, please, please, uh, consider that you're, you know, as we share these numbers, you're giving matters. That's all. Yeah, just you're giving yeah, matters. Yeah. Thanks. Um, last thing I want to say: the the number given directly to missions. This isn't about the operating budget. This isn't about you know buying cameras. This is the money given directly to mission projects to our to our mission partners. Mm-hmm. Whether it's local, like the mission, the Mosaic Center, mm-hmm. or it's uh, on the other side of the world, like Hope for Today, mm-hmm. our ministry in India. $35,538. Wow. That's our second highest GIC giving in four years. Wow. So, um, and we really didn't have a GIC. And we didn't have a GIC and we didn't have a mission trip. So, this is not mission trip money at all. Yeah. This is just money to our mission partners. I'm going to tell you see, Thank the thing you. is, yeah, when you have a church, Hmm. You at least have people who are regularly giving, but a nonprofit doesn't have a congregation attached. A nonprofit yeah. is really, a lot of nonprofits were really out there. And hmm. so to be able to continually give to our mission partners, that was a big deal. Yeah. And not only did we give to them, but they gave to us. Um, this week, you'll see in the community news, you will see um, a, a note from our uh, CFI mission partner. She, hmm. she she sent us a video. So she's just been very kind to remember hmm. us. Peter has kept up with us with Hope for Today. We've kept up with TMS Global through yeah. my participation on their board. Hmm. Um, we've just, it's been good to keep up with our mission partners Absolutely. and to have them keep up with us. Absolutely. Yeah. So y'all, again, I would like to thank all the, the volunteers that pulled yeah. all this off last year year by the grace of God. Yeah. But I'd also like to thank you guys who've been supporting us on the other side of the camera because yeah. it really has been a learning experience. I mean, frankly, yeah. <laughs> it was nowhere in my goals of 2020 to figure out how to get us online and any of that stuff. And frankly, I was would not have been the guy that would have been hired had Mosaic been trying to find that guy. Right. Um, right. So thank we you did. for... We, <laughs> neither you nor I was that person, but God just showed up and he gifted us and he gave us what we needed. And 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 I can tell you that we know a lot more today than we did in March 2020. And, and, and you've got a passion for it. I do. I yeah. do. And so I'm just very grateful for your patience yeah. and your faithfulness on the other side of the camera. Yeah. Thank you so much. Be blessed.